friend of the show, Andrew Torres of the Opening Arguments podcast, asked if he could have your ear for a few minutes for a bit of a call to action. So, class, we have a guest. Andrew, take it away. Hi, this is Andrew Torres of the Opening Arguments podcast, and this is a call to action. It's a way you can make a difference just by sending an email. This is a baseball story that's not about baseball. Gabe Kapler is the reigning National League Manager of the Year. Last year, he led the San Francisco Giants to 107 wins, which is the most ever. It goes back to 1883. This year, the Giants are 25 and 21. They're one of the better teams in the league. And yet, some people want Gabe Kapler fired. And as you might suspect, it's for reasons that have nothing to do with baseball. You see, last Friday, in the wake of the Uvalde school shooting, Kapler wrote a heart-wrenching blog post called Home of the Brave, question mark. I was going to read some of, of the most moving parts, but I realized it's all moving. Here are his words. The day 19 children and two teachers were murdered, we held a moment of silence at sporting events around the country. Then we played the national anthem, and we went on with our lives. Players, staff, and fans stood for the moment of silence, grieving the lives lost. And then we, myself included, continued to stand, proudly proclaiming ourselves the land of the free and the home of the brave. We didn't stop to reflect on whether we're actually free and brave after this horrific event. We just stood at attention. When I was the same age as the children in Uvalde, My father taught me to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance when I believed my country was representing its people well, or to protest and stay seated when it wasn't. I don't believe it is representing us well right now. This particular time, an 18-year-old walked into a store, bought multiple assault rifles and hundreds of rounds of ammunition, walked into a school with an armed resource officer in its own police district, and was able to murder children for nearly an hour. Parents begged and pleaded with police officers to do something. Police officers who had weapons and who received nearly 40% of the city's funding as their children were being murdered. We elect our politicians to represent our interests. Immediately following the shooting, we were told we needed locked doors and armed teachers. We were given thoughts and prayers. We were told it could have been worse And we just need love. But we weren't given bravery. And we aren't free. The police on the scene put a mother in handcuffs as she begged them to go in and save her children. They blocked parents trying to organize to charge in to stop the shooter, including a father who learned his daughter was murdered while he argued with the cops. We aren't free when politicians decide that the lobbyists and the gun industries are more important than our children's freedom to go to school without needing bulletproof backpacks and active shooter drills. I'm often struck before our games by the lack of delivery of the promise of what our national anthem represents. We stand in honor of a country where we elect representatives to serve us, to thoughtfully consider and enact legislation that protects the interests of all the people in this country and to move this country forward towards the vision of that shining city on the hill. But instead, we thoughtlessly link our moment of silence and grief with the equally thoughtless display of celebration for a country that refuses to take up the concept of controlling the sale of weapons used nearly exclusively for the mass slaughter of human beings. We have our moment over and over, and then we move on without demanding real change from the people we empower to make those changes. We stand, we bow our heads, and the people in power leave on recess, celebrating their own patriotism at every turn. Every time I place my hand over my heart and remove my hat, I'm participating in a self-congratulatory glorification of the only country where these mass shootings take place. On Wednesday, I walked out onto the field. I listened to the announcement as we honored the victims in Uvalde. I bowed my head I stood for the national anthem, Metallica riffed on City Connect guitars. My brain said, drop to a knee. My body didn't listen. I wanted to walk back inside. Instead, I froze. I felt like a coward. 
I didn't want to call attention to myself. I didn't want to take away from the victims or their families. This was a baseball game. There was a rock band. There were lights, pageantry. I knew that thousands of people were using this game to escape the horrors of the world for just a little bit. I knew that thousands more wouldn't understand the gesture, would take it as an offense to the military, to veterans, to themselves. But I am not okay with the state of this country. I wish I hadn't let my discomfort compromise my integrity. I wish that I could have demonstrated what I learned from my dad, that when you're dissatisfied with your country, you let it be known through protest. The home of the brave should encourage this. And that's it. Gabe Kapler announced he wasn't going to mindlessly trot out onto the field and place his hand over his heart anymore. He was going to use his position, his visibility, to do what he could to stand for change. Now, you may know San Francisco as the town where an African-American quarterback sending a similar message got blackballed out of the league for quietly taking a knee during the national anthem. I don't know the full story there, but I do know that right now, the same people that drummed out Colin Kaepernick, led by ex-Giants ball player Aubrey Huff, a MAGA hat-wearing, true-believing Trumper, are organizing their followers to flood the Giants with complaints about Gabe Kapler. And they have. Hate is a powerful motivator. And the Giants are a business. They care about their bottom line. The risk that Gabe Kapler gets fired over this is real. It's happened before. Unless we show them that courage and social change can be good for business, too. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take 30 seconds and send an email to the Giants. I'm going to give you the email addresses in a minute. And I want you to say three simple things in your own words. They are, one, I stand with Gabe Kapler. I support the message. Two, I applaud the Giants for having the courage to back their manager. I applaud the Giants for standing against gun violence and for not shutting him down. And number three, and this is the important part, I'll be supporting the team financially. Listening to games, going to games, buying a Gabe Kapler jersey, telling my friends to do the same, whatever. And that's it. I know a lot of you feel the same way I do. And right now, our voices are being overwhelmed. They are being drowned out by right-wing hate monsters who are boycotting the Giants, threatening never to go to games, threatening not to buy merchandise until Kapler gets fired. So if you agree with Gabe Kapler's message, if you were at all moved by what he said, let's let his bosses know that we support him. That's the president of baseball operations, Farhan Zaidi, and the CEO, Larry Baer, B-A-E-R. Their email addresses are, get out a pen and paper, your computer, fzaidi at sfgiants.com. That is F-Z-A-I-D-I at S-F-G-I-A-N-T-S dot C-O-M. And lbear at sfgiants.com, L B A E R at S-F-G-I-A-N-T-S dot com. That's F Zaidi at sfgiants.com and L Bear at sfgiants.com. Thank you so much for listening to this. Thank you for writing emails. Together we can make a difference.